It's finals week. The search for Ireland's first ever MasterChef winner is nearly over. Now only three remain. Tonight, it's the first part of the final. The penultimate challenge involves the last three contestants cooking in some of the country's finest restaurants. Burn yourself there. Looking back to the first audition, I never thought I'd be at this stage. I've challenged myself, I've pushed myself, and I'm here. I'm in the final three now. Your quest is not to Bon appetit. Sonap. Trois quarts, one ravioli, one foie gras, one trotter, one veal. One veal. One veal. At this stage of the competition, it's all to play for. I suppose it's like playing for tip and All Ireland final day. There's really no excuses. It's, it has to be perfect. Really, really, really important to me. It's at no stage I want to see a section like this. Yeah. Never. This is the pinnacle of, of the mass chef learning experience. This is as good as it gets in terms of cooking. Every component on the plate has to be perfect. In two days' time, the champion will be crowned. But first, their next challenge. In recent years, the Dublin restaurant scene has exploded and become a vibrant mix with many different types of cuisines and styles of eateries. The capital city has over 700 restaurants, four one Michelin stars and one restaurant that has two stars. It's finals week on MasterChef and for their first challenge, each contestant has been allocated their very own one Michelin star restaurant. All three will be cooking evening service, and for the first time, they will be cooking without other contestants. At this stage, they need to prove that they can hold their nerve and cook with the very best. It's a bit lonely being here on my own. It's a lot of pressure to take. Nobody's talked about it, really. At this stage in the competition, it's all to play for, and in my head, I'm trying to erase everything that's gone before. I think the final day is judgment day. The experience we have from now until then is going to be all about building up yourself, your own repertoire, thinking of yourself 100% and focusing on your dishes. That is very exciting, really. Hello. Hi, Dean. Welcome to Lake Van. Thank you very much. I'm Derry. Thanks very much for having me here. No, it's a pleasure having you here today, really. But, uh, you know, as you see today how difficult it is, it really is now kind of a step up for you, I think. Uh, yeah. I have a dish picked for you, and you're going to do that on your own. That's no problem. Yeah. Up to you. Show us what you can do. Yeah. You will find stress, pressure. Mm hmm That's natural. Okay. I mean, we are a business. It's an ongoing restaurant. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I've had, you know, many chefs have come in and said, you know, easy peasy, great CVs, and the last of day. Yeah. Well, I have no CV, so uh, starting from scratch. Well, you will after this. I will after this, exactly, <laughs> yeah. You know, you have a lot of work to do. Okay. So, uh, we start? We will. We'll get okay, let's started. go for it. Come on. Good stuff. Come on, okay. to the kitchen. If you can do what I do today, I'd be really happy. 28 year old occupational therapist Bridgine may have had an unpredictable MasterChef journey, but one thing that shone through was her confidence. Oh, God. Claire and Richard. Anybody got free hands? Oh my God. I need some yes, parsley indeed. chopped. Yeah. Good work, guys. We're doing well. I actually have not one doubt in my head that we're going to win today. Pierce, do we have the celiac fish coming? Yeah, it's coming. How long will it be, though? However, at times, her unfaltering determination tripped her up. What is this? I think you could have done a better job. Get it right first before you start adding your own twists would be my... Yeah. OK. I felt like I let them down, basically. I can't make any excuses. Crushing. Crushing. Did you clean the prawns? Yeah. Even them? Yeah. They're not cleaned. What do we expect more from you? Yeah. I think this is maybe the worst issue that you've done for us. I mean, she seems to get very upset. I don't know why she cares that much if she's going to produce such bad food. Her dish on the fishing task firmly put her back in the competition. This looks visually beautiful. You know, something that looks as visually beautiful as it tastes. And I was starting to get worried about you, so I'm glad you're <laughs> back in the competition. It's good to be back. <laughs> Le Crivan has had its star for eight years, and today Bridging will be cooking a Hereford beef fillet with tongue, cheek and kidney pativier, celeriac puree and fondant, accompanied by Paris brown mushrooms and truffle aioli. Sorry, this is going to be your dish. My right? dish, yeah. yeah. I know it looks overwhelming, but remember, 
But really, the cooking tonight is these two, the TVA yeah. and this, the fillet. OK, a little oil. I used sometimes use that Donegal rapeseed oil, really good. Pan's quite hot, you can see that. Yeah, searing it, smoking. Sure. Fillet of beef. I'm not going to season it until I turn it. OK. okay. Yeah, you ever see, you ever see a steak where it's speckled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get the seasoning done, yeah. done that, OK? OK. Those bits, good, those yeah. bits weren't, didn't, weren't touching the pan, OK? OK. These are ready, so it's nice and warm here. Here in the salamander. Working in a professional kitchen is a massive adrenal rush. It's kind of a funny one because when you start off going into the kitchen, you know, the kitchens we went into at the start, it was a little bit intimidating, a little bit scary because you weren't used to those environments. But now that we've been exposed to them, we realise, okay, you know, it might be tough, but you'll survive and it's not the end of the world. Now you're going in just trying to prove yourself and it's all about me and what I do today. Um, so there's, there's really no excuses. It's, it has to be perfect. Now, oh, plating. Slurric puree. It's beautiful, yeah. It's really smooth. Very smooth, okay. yeah. Down like that and do it have a swizzle. See that? Yeah. And I'm going to put the, the tibia. Uh, okay. Now, the tongue. Let me put that there. Straight on. Now, we're almost there. Last little piece, maybe. Put it there, didn't it? Okay. Uh, now, look, no, easy peasy. Fabulous. Really? Yeah. That is, is really yeah. gorgeous. They always say you're as good as your last meal. It's true. And for us, we try to make every dish as best we can. That's your goal for tonight now, okay? You know, the challenge has really been put to me. This is an amazing dish, and hopefully, it's not my last supper. This is a great opportunity. I'm looking forward to today. I know we're so close to the end of this competition now, and it's been a brilliant journey. I'm dying to get into the kitchen, the studio, and cook the final dish. But between now and then, it's getting experience. Anything I can learn now, or any little process or new idea, everything will be put into the final dish, definitely. The more I can learn, the better. I've got to really step it up. I mean, the three-course dish for the final is the dish of my life, so, you know, the meal of my life, it's got to be brilliant. Mike has had some good MasterChef days, and some not so good. How long? 12 more minutes. 12 minutes? We just go and get them an ice cream instead then, will we? He led the winning team in the Ballyfin Canapé Challenge. And the results are in. And to a resounding victory. Great compliments, great team. <laughs> happy days. Soon after that, Mike's star began to fall. Look, I'm not happy with that dish at all. I wouldn't serve it to anybody. Mike today, he made a quite simple mistake where he used egg yolk instead of whole eggs. It wasn't really nice to eat. You do not give the next chef this. Yes, chef. OK? Yeah. Oh, shit. Burnt naan bread. Papa Dom's. No salt in the rice. Mike needs a good shake. And it got worse before it got better. You know what? New plates. You start fresh. Yeah, let's go, quickly. It does feel like as if the girls are stronger. So, if you think about it, we're actually on our way for an all-girl final. But in Dylan's masterclass, Mike excelled. Mike, I have to say, I think it's really, really, really good. I think that's the best thing you've done in the competition. Wow. Morning. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. Welcome to Bon Appetit. I'm Oliver. Thanks. And uh, congratulations on getting this far in the competition. We've a huge amount of work to do today, but I'm sure you're well able. OK, nothing to worry about. And it's going bad for you. We'll just send you home. Um, <laughs> but no, it's all going to be great. So yeah. as soon as you're ready, let's get to the kitchen and get cracking straight away. Excellent. Ready Good. to go? Yep. Bon Appetit was awarded its star in 2008. And today, Mike will be cooking heather-scented Irish lamb, crushed sunchokes, sunchoke and sauntere puree, girol mushrooms and toasted sunflower seed snow. OK, Mike, um, tonight we're doing a six-course surprise tasting menu, okay? OK? So we do this quite regularly at the restaurant, so it's going to be the mousse bouche, OK? There'll be two starters, there'll be a, a vegetarian course, a fish course, then you'll be coming in the meat course, which okay. is lamb. So what we have today, we have a beautiful um, organic lamb, OK, from County Mead, OK? okay. So we're going to be cooking it sous vide, OK? How we achieve it. Today was great because I think today was one of the first times there was no nerves. I, I, I'd say, oddly, this is a different task in that I actually wasn't even thinking about judges, I wasn't even thinking about performance or anything. It was just, look, we have a dish to cook. Chef has shown us, he spent all morning with us. We have to live up to these standards, and that was it. And that's what I loved about it. It was just, we just got to get on with it. Make your asparagus. We do a, a burramonte, OK, which is basically a butter and water emulsion, all right? Okay. So you got a little bit of butter, get some boiling water, and just drop. I think he's going to do very well. I think he's up for the challenge. 
He was hungry, he wants to learn, like, you know, he's taking notes all day and the amazement of everything, you know, the simple little thing for me now might be amazing for Mike, but it's great to see it. This boudin should be ready now, okay? So that gets rolled in your herb crumb. I believe I have come on leaps and bounds from when I started, definitely. You know, I'm so much more confident in the kitchen now. I'm confident with the tools I'm using, the environment I'm in. The rush of the kitchen doesn't bother anymore. You know, it's about the dish, and that's where it's supposed to be. Your focus is on the dish. And then your lamb. Carve your lamb. Three nice slices. Season. The lamb boudin to one side. I have to say, I'm quietly confident going into tonight. I think uh, he'll pull it off, and we'll kick him a couple of times along the way if he doesn't, you know? Snow, again, sprinkle that over the plate. A little bit of your lamb jus. And that, quite simply, is the dish you're going to create tonight. No butter. Right. <laughs> that dish is magnificent. I'd say maybe getting to serve as the first plate. There might be a shaky hand or two, but uh, other than that, no, I'm looking forward to it. That's absolutely outstanding. There you go. Beautiful. All ahead of you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it. I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed at the prospect of walking into a, a mission start kitchen. What an opportunity. It's going to be fantastic. I've tried to get in here a few times, but it's always been booked up. I think I told my husband that I wanted to come here for my birthday. So, uh, yeah, they might see me back here next November. <laughs> I'm unbelievably excited about the prospect of going into the kitchen today. I think it's going to be the most fantastic experience. A whole day in here is just going to be incredible. I'm really, really looking forward to learning as much as I possibly can because you know, I'm never going to get to be in here again and just got to, you know, seize the day. Mary, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Ross Lewis is my name. Lovely to meet Welcome you. Welcome to chapter one. Great to have you here. Thank you. You're not nervous, I hope, are you? A little bit. Okay. But, um, well, there's good no nervous, need to be so nervous. Excited. Tonight you're going to be on evening service with me. We've got a nice little fish dish for you to do, a turbot. And so uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll get into the kitchen and I'll explain to you what we have to do for the day. Excellent. Okay. Thank Come you. Come with me. Now, Mary. This is your home for the day, Chapter One Kitchen. Twenty-eight-year-old aircom business manager Mary sailed through the audition round. Absolutely fantastic. That, for me, is the dish of the day. Wow. <laughs> but then the pressure seemed to get to her. You can't work in that mess and produce clean food. When the pressure comes on, she's really going to fall down. I want to see on the pass in one minute, one salmon, one longestine, one scallop. Come on, Mary. Did you not do any ice on yourself? Pardon? Oh, shh. You're not concentrating on what you're doing. You've taken your eye off it and no, it's burnt. I actually, I... This is a mess. Conversation's over. And after a tough few weeks, Mary wowed both judges and her confidence soared. This is um, brilliant. How did you find Mary did overall with the sweetbreads? The cooking and her taste is very, very good, I thought. I can't say enough how proud I am of you. Mary, I love you. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You weren't married. <laughs> Apart from their star, Chapter One is fated internationally by Condé Nast and Gourmet Traveller as one of Ireland's finest dining experiences. Today, Mary will be cooking pan-fried turbot with lemon butter emulsion, broccoli puree and a deep-fried crab beignet. We're going to yes. do a run-through, OK? So that you're clear in your mind of what, what we're asking you to do tonight. You are cooking in the one Michelin star restaurant tonight. And obviously, we need your cooking to be as good as everyone else's, which I'm sure it will be. OK? Yes. Right. You'll be leading the kitchen tonight, OK? okay. It's really important because the fish section leads the timing of the main courses going up. So your role here tonight is one of leadership. This is turbot, OK? It's uh, what they would call the queen of the sea. So there we go. You want to hear a nice little sizzle? sizzle. I have to be up to Mission Star Standard tonight, which is going to be a tough challenge, to be honest. I struggle with the pressure, um, but I've managed to contain that now. But 
I've had a number of tough days, to be honest. I'm going to finish it with a little bit of uh, butter and I'm going to put some Nolly Pratt. I definitely have learned that you can go to a point of meltdown and actually come back. You just have to, you know, realise that, step back from it and just go, OK, take deep breaths and then, you know, carry on. We start with a nice slob of broccoli puree. We drizzle into it uh, an olive oil that has been flavoured with anchovy and garlic, but very mildly flavoured, yeah. OK? So what we must remember always is that we mustn't overpower the main ingredients. And just to, just to complement that, then, we have some crab, OK? The beignet is deep fried in the deep fat fryer, OK? So we're adding a kind of a different texture that's a little bit crispy, but it's soft inside, yeah. okay? So we're going to season the turba. As I said, a little bit of yuzu salt. Yuzu salt is a Japanese fruit, like a lemon, only it's more fragrant. So it's like between a lemon and a lemongrass, okay? Our fish in here. We're going to put our beignet right there at the start of the yeah. swirl, okay? You can put the broccoli kind of in nice artistic places, okay? So we want to fill up the plate. The last flourish, okay? We just put the lemon butter sauce on like that. OK. But we put a little bit of perno in there, because that kind of anise flavour suits it. This is the pinnacle of, a, of the mass chef learning experience. Every component on the plate has to be perfect. And I think that's a philosophy that anyone who's a mission star has to adhere to. Clearly, that, that's the philosophy here. So what you're seeing is the beautiful plate, first of all. You start with the canvas, then you're seeing some lovely colours. You eat with your eyes, OK? Yeah. So you're looking at that and you're saying, I want to eat this. I'd love to taste it, actually. Well, that's what I want you to do yeah. next, because I really want you to understand what we're doing, OK? Yeah. It's such an honour to be in this kind of establishment. This is as good as it gets in terms of cooking. It's going to be a great day, so I just have to, you know, focus on recreating this dish as best as I can and as safely as I can. Absolutely sensational. Really, really delicious. It's finals week on MasterChef, and today the last three standing have been allocated their own one Michelin star Dublin-based restaurant, and they will be cooking evening service alongside their famous chefs. The first checks will arrive in at 7 p.m., and between now and then, they are all responsible for the preparation of their dishes. Bridine, here we go. This is the engine room in here. Brilliant. All action. Wayne, this is Bridine. Our head chef is Wayne. How are you doing, Wayne? And Neil. We have Anna there and Stephen. Hi, I'm going to put you here uh, working with Wayne yeah. and Neil, OK? Yeah. On the yeah. For all three of them, the end goal is within sight. But apart from impressing their chefs and stepping up to the mark today, they must also use the next few hours as inspiration, as they will need to cook again very soon for Dylan and Nick before the winner can be crowned. There is a lot on the line today. It's a bit intimidating being all on your own. You're used to having everybody around you, so arriving in here today, I suppose it's going to be important to establish myself as part of the team and get to know the other chefs that I'll be working with. They look all right to you? Yeah. You want to make, like, kind of long cuts, you know? Okay. You get to know people very quick when you're in that sort of intense environment and you're working very closely together. So, yeah, it'll be important to get to know the guys down there in the kitchen. Do you recycle glass? Yeah, I'll show you where that goes. Okay. I won't really need this your space. It's more me than you. That's you, like... OK. <laughs> I just use my hands for the beef on and I'll for get turning you. it. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll get you a pair of them, don't worry. And what way is the lobster served, then? Um, so you'll see it later on during yeah. the service. So. You'll be beside me, yeah. Redeen so far has done quite well. It's like actually uh, like a football team, like a new player tonight. Right, Redeen, you have the two guys here, Nick and Dylan. That's right, know them well. And I'd love you to cook yep. your beef dish yep. I showed you today Absolutely. for them, no please. Problem. Dylan and Nick have decided to visit all three finalists tonight at some point in the evening. And at 6 p.m. and shortly before service kicks off, the judges arrive in Lecrivan. Ultimately, were you happy with her work? Like, I mean, did you think she worked well this morning? Uh, overall, quite good. Yeah. She was clever enough to get in on side with a couple okay, of chefs. Yeah, that's well, that's, I thought it was, I thought, sounds like I thought it was very clever. Actually, it was a very clever thing to do. If I was actually coming to a strange kitchen, I'd do the same thing. You'd try and of come course, on side yeah, with someone, yeah, wouldn't you, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd give us a, a, a nave one. Right, <laughs> okay. Jean, for us, has shown some real natural ability. Very ambitious girl. Um, 
but has fallen down from time to time. She's definitely in the right place, so it'll be really interesting to see how she copes mm. with you this evening. This would normally take a professional chef maybe more than a few days to master, but she's literally doing one service tonight, and today she really has to be on top of her game if she wants to really win the title of Master Chef. Hey, tonight, I don't want to see her crash tonight. No. You know, for her sake, and for my sake too. And your customers. And for the restaurant's <laughs> sake, and the customers. Boys, enjoy your dinner. There goes the diet, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's good. It's wonderful. Really good. Lads, you were hungry, definitely. These guys are hungry, huh? Yeah, it works well together. It's good yeah. everyone works together. It's a great yeah. dish, yeah. Okay, good luck. Good luck. Thanks, Mick. Meanwhile, in Malahide, Mike is awaiting service and is doing all the final prep to his lamb for their six course tasting menu. I don't know if I'm feeling confident, but we'll, we'll see. We've got a service ahead of us with 40 people over two hours. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Looking forward to them. First check on, table 10 for two, please. Thank you. Okay. Two surprise, two canopies, please. With the dining room full and every one of tonight's diners having the lamb as part of this evening's event, Mike is instantly under pressure. Do it. I'm dealing with it. I'm enjoying it and getting on with it. First at 7 o'clock for four, please. And can I have bread for four as well? Yes. We're going to go on that lamb in five minutes, OK? So it's five minutes on okay. the pass we're going to be dressing. Season your lamb, fry it. OK, so this lamb yeah. needs three minutes to heat up through the oven. OK? So, yeah. now, because it's gone too cold, OK? Sure. As the orders come in fast and furious, Oliver reins Mike back into line. That's just waste of a slice of lamb, OK? There's no point in going gung-ho at the start, yeah? Yep. Don't do anything yep. until you know what you're doing, yep. OK? Because you're just going to destroy everything, OK? So just wait. Timing's the key, OK? Yep. If you haven't done anything yet and you're putting lamb in, you're going to destroy the whole lamb. You're standing two and you put enough in for five. OK. okay? So don't do anything until I tell you. You don't know what you're doing. You know, to start a service, obviously he's a bit nervy. I could see it in him. He didn't know what way to take us and that. But uh, first table, he started off a bit bullish. I just turned me back for a second table away and just, everything was on, you know? So uh, I corrected him on that and pulled him up on us. And then from there, I explained the system and the rhythm. So, you know, a couple of slight corrections. Oil in, in you go. It has to be super, super hot. Stop. See this? This is going to save you from burning yourself. And also, you'll be quicker. There's no need for you to be working like that. If you stop, listen, and learn the first one, yeah. you'll be perfect the rest of the night. If you just keep pulling in, you'll just okay. be on a slippery oh, slope for the whole night. Okay? OK? You do, but you have to do it the right way. Again, you're rushing into it. it. Stop. There's yeah. no point to going into cold pans, burning garlic, to achieve nothing. So just your first one, let's just wait. You'll get it perfect. And then from there on in, you're on your own. You flow perfect. through it, OK? Nice and quick. Mushrooms in. That's on wrong. OK, turn your heat down. You don't want any fires. Your pan's too hot, OK? Put your lamb out of the oven. Just check and make sure it's hot enough. Once everything's cooked, underneath the lights, let's keep it hot, keep the light on top, OK? In the sink, in the sink. You're playing with pots and pans, you should be sending food. Carve OK, carve the lamb, please. Six slice slices. Quick, you need to go quicker, Mike. Things are going cold. OK, OK? Let's start dressing. Grant, lamb on, please. Just like that. Got it? And your boot on. Got it. Couple of blobs, that's it, perfect. Then your snow, OK? The last bit of sunflower seeds, you know, straight across the tip of the lamb. Go ahead. OK, on the tray. Well done, Mike, straight up. Fab. And away, please, table 10, two lamb. Well done. All right? Yep. That's the system we follow through the night. No, no. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your main course is arriving. Thank you. It all just comes together beautifully. The whole lot. With their pre-theatre service over, Mary awaits the first checks for evening service in Chapter 1. It's showtime, and uh, we have Mary with us here tonight. Welcome on board, Mary. Thank you. Um, it is one goat's cheese, one ravioli, one spring roll, one trolley, one beef, and one duck well done. Wait, No turban on that, Mary. Nothing yet. I'm feeling a bit nervous. The dish I'm cooking is really, really lovely. It's kind of a take on fish with lemon and broccoli. I want to do the dish justice. He also won't serve it unless it's up to scratch. OK, coming in second order of the night. One no starter, one Irish coffee, one lobster to start, one lamb, lamb, one duck, one turbot. First of the night for you, Mary, OK? Oui. OK, Mary? Yes, Chef. 
New order, one ravioli, one soup, one cod, one mackerel, one turbot, Mary, one duck. Yes, right. Chef. Right. Mary now needs to get her first order plated correctly and to Ross's exacting standards before she can start on her second. Right, a little bit quicker, Mary, a little bit quicker. Yeah. Okay, Mary? Yes, Chef. Yeah, I'll take it off the heat, Mary. Move it on, move it on to the heat, Mary. That's it. Fish can cook off the heat, Mary. Yes, Chef. David, check if that's cooked. I doubt it. No, another 30 seconds, Chef. Put it under the grill. OK, Mary, are you going to plate? Yes, Chef. Right, take off your broccoli, turn around and start looking at the plating. Let's go. Put it on the pass, Mary, under the lights. Here we go. Careful with that. No, start again, Mary. OK, I'm going to do this one for you, okay. first one. You're going to do all the rest yourself, OK? Yes, Chef. All right, there you go. Fantastic to be surrounded by such talented chefs. It's lovely to see the precision and the, and the detail in every dish and the way the whole, the whole thing operates. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. OK, Mary's sauce, let's go. Here we go, first table away. That's it, down over it like you care about it. It's not bad, Mary. Very good. Thank nice you, effort for the first one, OK? Everything just goes like clockwork, and that's the way it has to in this kitchen. It's really, really fabulous place to work. That's it, Mary. Working fast. Nice and clean, but working fast, yes, OK? That's it, Mary. Nicely done. Well done. Thanks, Chef. In demand tonight, Mary. You're in demand. Yes. Shortly after 7 p.m., and the first orders arrive in Le Crivan's kitchen. Order, Chef. Off we go, away. Yeah. You got the starters. One lobster. One beef medium rare. Lovely. Bridgine gets her first order for her beef dish. OK, one Batavia vegetarian, one egg, one beef medium well. Chef. Yes, Chef. No problem, Chef. And then another beef. Will I put on my pastries now? I'll tell you when to put them on. Okay. You can start sealing off your beef. Yeah. See the way it's kind of colouring around the outside, but not in the middle? Not enough oil. Just give it a little, like... That's coming along quite nicely. OK. Order on. Lobster, one salmon, three beef. Yes, Chef. Get it on as fast as you can. Yeah. Now, with three more beef on order, Bridgine has to rely more and more on the other chefs. Hot again. Yeah. OK. Yeah, turn it all the way over. Turn the eight. Turn okay. them over. Get them going around the side. Yeah. And in. Good. So you've got the other two to the eggs in? They're in, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're in the middle of the storm. I'm sure it's going to get more pressurised now in a little while when we start serving up the mains. But, uh, no, everything seems under control. I think the guys know what they're doing, so uh, I'll just get involved and do the best I can. Um, don't worry now. Take your time. You're OK. You're OK. Yes, sir. OK, you're same pace as me. OK, now. Yes, sir. That'll do. OK, go. Right, let it go, let it go. Very well presented, and I'm really looking forward now to, to tasting it. Delicious. Order coming in. One pig, one chicken, one hake, one salmon, one lobster, one beef medium. Yes, Chef. Medium well. So what's the same medium rare? rare? Same as last time, OK? Go in now. Go on. Working in a professional kitchen is a massive adrenaline rush. It's just one of those surreal experiences, very intense. And, and you're trying to focus on everything and you're trying to keep four things in your head at the same time, you're just wound up. You get completely wound up in service. So it's, it's a real buzz. you got three. Take your time, OK? Medium, medium rare. OK, do remember that. Do my line. Puree on first, puree on first. Yeah. Can't focus now, you got to yeah. focus. OK, sir. Take your time now, take your time. Now keep that up now, keep that up. Yes, you're doing grand now. No you're, in the, you're in the flow now, you're flowing in now, you're doing fine. Bit of version 10, okay? Beef's ready. Away, guys, please. Medium, medium rare. Oh, wow. Yeah. The presentation. Look at that. Well, the presentation is terrific. It's really fantastic. Mmm. It, it really is outrageously delicious. Please give my compliments to this chef. Absolutely <laughs> delicious. Burn yourself yet? Yeah, absolutely. Not finished yet, though. But she's doing well so far. So. 
8.30 p.m., Dylan and Nick have now arrived in Malahide to witness Mike in the throes of his very first solo service. Same again then on the pass, Mike. We're going in, in sequence, yes? It's going to be going in five, mate. Yeah. Five from now. Let's get the lamb ready to go. Yeah, I'm on ready the tray. to go. Start heating your pans up. Yep. OK, Mike, we need to go here. Come on, come on, come on. Car, car, faster, please. Make sure you season it. Bring it up just a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Right, I'm going to need to go with you, OK? It's too slow, all right? I think at this stage of the competition, we're seeing Mike's weakness. We know his strength. He can do one dish fantastically. He proved it with the master class. But can he do a number of dishes in a service, one after each other, even if they're the same? Hmm. Today, I don't see it. Rings off, lamb in the middle, start yep. going. Go ahead. He doesn't seem to be really pushing it for me. I, I just, uh, you know, I see, I see him struggling quite a bit. Mm. It's a great opportunity. Here he is in a one star. And you would expect to see something a lot more than what we're seeing. He should be really in his flow by now. But uh, I'm just, I'm not seeing any sparks, you know. I'm not seeing mm. any real uh, push. But it does seem like typical Mike, because you ask him the question and he seems to be, yeah, I'm boxed off, I'm fine, I'm good. But then mm. I don't really feel that from him that he is. It's been a great day. Happy out. Nice and warm in here. Uh, yeah. Cozy. Yeah, cozy, yeah. Good job, Mike. We're going six. Cool, yep. Finish. We have a beautiful aroma of header scented spring lamb. Bon appetit. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's fantastic. Back in chapter one on Dublin's north side. Mary, the next course on the chef's table is your course. This is your chance to shine. And uh, then you come back and finish service with us. Yes, you will yes. come back now, won't you? I will indeed. I'm loving it. Thank you. I just have been very pleasantly surprised so far. I suppose she was a little bit nervous, but I did find her very open and very excited as to what she was going to do, which is always a great sign, right? She works very hard. She's very focused, we've always found, and she's got a real palate as well. Yeah. She seems to have a great inner strength. She doesn't buckle under pressure so far. She's quite reserved, and you can see that she's a marathon woman in the sense that you know, she's for the long haul. Yeah. You've taken her from being a home cook to a chef. Yes, absolutely. And I'd say she's somebody who could make a really excellent chef. Would you give her a job? I would. Nicely cooked, Mary, nicely cooked. Chef. I think you've done this before, Mary, have you? Yeah. Right, give me the broccoli puree. We're going to do a slightly different presentation here for the chef's table, OK? OK. Chapter one is famed for its chef's table in the kitchen. And it is a restaurant tradition that the chef cooking each course goes to the table and explains their dish to the diners. Mary will have to explain the elements of her turbot dish. Hi, folks. How are you? Hi. Um, I've cooked your, your dish this evening. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It is a crab beignet uh, with broccoli puree, uh, fillet of turbot, uh, served with a lemon butter sauce. So um, I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please shoot. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. So I've eaten in chapter one a long time, and I'd say that's one of the better dishes I've eaten. It was beautiful. Seasoning was perfect. It was a beautiful piece of fish. Uh, superb dish all around. Absolutely a joy to eat. Coming in, last check of the evening. Two gold cheese, one trolley, one lobster, one lamb, and one turbot, especially for you, Mary. Yes, Chef. Great. Last dish now, Mary, OK? Yes, Chef. Table 19, two minutes, one turbot with one lamb. Let's make it as good as the first one. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a fantastic uh, day. And um, I just love it, loved it every minute of it. Okay, carefully does it, Mary? Yes, Chef. Let's keep it consistent. Yes, Chef. All night, right till the finish, like yes, a true pro, okay? It was a real privilege to work in there today. Like, it was absolutely magical. Right, Mary, say goodnight to your last server. Goodnight, Jervis. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed this. Right, lads, come over here, please. Come over here, all of you. Just want to say thanks for tonight. It's a great night, OK? So, well done, team. Thanks very much. I think uh, Mary showed us all what can be done if we really put our minds to it. It's definitely been the highlight of the entire competition for me. I think I've, I've taken some really interesting lessons from today, and I'm looking forward to applying them for the final. You stood the test of service. Well done. I've had a lot of chefs in here who can't do that. You didn't falter and you were consistent all throughout. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I just loved every single minute of it, and I'd come back in here every day of the week if I could. I like, just loved it. Really loved it.
It is the last lamb dish of the evening in Malahide. OK, Mike, last table away. Yep. OK, let's make a count. OK. That's it. Serve side down. Perfect. In here now, bit of butter. A handful there. That's it. Perfect. Service. Right, and away. We're going, table one. Right, Mike, that's it. Cool. Well done. Thanks very much. No problem, you've done great. You've done very well. Hopefully your customers got liked it as well. But they all hate it. That's the key. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm no, screwed, so... Okay. Feedback's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. Good, good. So, uh, very impressed. Good on you. I thought it was a brilliant day. I've enjoyed every moment of it, and I've uh, enjoyed even the cleaning down. Yeah, clean down. Yeah. <laughs> Fun, <laughs> Fun starts now. Great experience. A little tired, but sure, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Quick little wipe, quick little clean. All in all, I was very happy with his performance. Very hard coming into a strange kitchen, you know. Of, of, if you're at any standard, like, you know, I would hate to go into a, someone else's kitchen and just be thrown into a section, because it's, you have to get your own rhythm and system, but, uh, yeah, he was really, like, I was really impressed with him. He's as good as any that would come in the door, especially on a first night. When you, when you take all things into consideration, he was, he'd be above average, you know? I'd be digging for him, anyway. I want the Bon Appetit boy all the way, you know? Um, but, you know, I really do. I wish him the best. We'll see what happens. And on Bagot Street in the city centre, Bridgine is on her final beef of the night. I think I'm nearly done, so I've got another few tables to get away and then that's it. Um, so yeah, everything's going well. All the beef's been cooked fine, nothing's come back. Um, thanks to everyone here, so it's all going really, really well. Last one. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was a great night. Each plate she did got better and better. And um, the last plate was the best, our best plate of the night. Right, that night is done. Done. I really enjoyed it. It's a massive high, definitely uh, a highlight of my life now. Service today might be up there with my wedding day, so I'll, I'll look back at this fond memories if no matter what else happens. Thanks, darling. Take, Take care. Home. Bye, bye, bye. She was a pleasure to have here today. The world's her oyster. She wants in this business. The future's there for her, really. If it really is, you know, I'd have her back here. Really would. So if she doesn't win the Master Chef Ireland, she's has a job here. So maybe as a runner-up prize. <laughs> I'm feeling tired walking out of here, but I'm really, really happy. I'm going to sleep well tonight, knowing I did a good job. Very early the following morning, and with only two days to go before they must cook again for Dylan and Nick, the finalists arrive at Ireland's only two Michelin star restaurant, Patrick Gibos. Exhausted from their long service yesterday, the three MasterChef finalists now need to find the stamina and reserves to step their cooking up to the next level. Morning, guys. Morning. I'm well done on the cooking in some of the best restaurants in the country at one star Michelin level. But your MasterChef journey is nearing the end, and this morning we have set the bar even higher. Restaurant Patrick Gibo holds the only two stars in the country. Having been awarded this accolade in 1996, it has remained unchallenged in this position ever since. Leading the team is Patrick himself, Director of Restaurant Stéphane Robin, and Executive Head Chef Guillaume Lebrun. Each of you today will get a Gilbo signature dish, which means you'll be solely responsible for that dish for the service. Chef Guillaume will be at the pass and nothing will leave the kitchen unless it meets his exacting standards. You really need to impress us here, but more importantly, you need to impress Guillaume and his diners. OK, guys, good luck. Restaurant Patrick Gibos on Dublin's Merrion Square first opened its doors in 1981, when Patrick himself moved from France to Ireland. The restaurant was awarded its first Michelin star in 1986 and its second in 1996. For me, there is a, a big difference between one and two stars. There is a real accomplishment in each dish, and that comes from the chef. 
Well, what's going on, I think, in Guillaume's kitchen is the fact that it's the finesse, it's the lightness of touch, it's the cooking timing is so important, it's the, the ingredients that they use, that there has to be class A ingredients, and that the execution of the cooking is just beyond belief. When you start going into two and three star Michelin restaurants, I always find that the chef nearly comes out on the plate. Some of what he is, is personified in food. I think Guillaume would teach them the importance of presentation. It's so important, you know, the balance. Does everything work together on that plate? That's why we're in the holy grail of restaurants. This is the ultimate. Because if you don't listen, you will quickly be kicked out in the back alley there with your kitchen clock on your head thinking, where the hell did I go wrong? That's it. Fabulous. Mike has been assigned one of the starters. He will be cooking Clotterhead lobster ravioli made with free-range egg pasta and coated in coconut-scented lobster cream and a split curry dressing. He will be cooking alongside head chef Kieron. I've never eaten in a restaurant like this, so this is a phenomenal experience for me. Looking back to the first audition, I never thought I'd be at this stage, but, you know, I've challenged myself, I've pushed myself, and I took every challenge on, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm here. I'm in the final three now. Okay, so I can put the whole lobster in. Yeah, no, 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 you have to uh, put the tails in first. Yeah. When that's boiling, take it off. Mike did very well from uh, straight from the start. He had a big mise en place list, and he got straight into it, but uh, the execution is, is, is paramount. Nothing's going to go out into the restaurant that's not top-notch, full stop. One of the main courses is a slow braised cheek of veal with grilled gambas prawn and lemongrass satay sauce. And Bridgine will be responsible for this dish. She will be cooking with second head chef Ross. We were looking for perfection before it's, I don't know, how'd you be perfection? But uh, they, go, they, go, they go another step. So um, yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be hard work today, making sure every element is correct and getting it plated up right. Nothing else will do. When you're making this sauce, you really need to build up your basis of flavours, eh? right from the start. She's doing reasonably well. She's very clinical, very clean, and uh, I actually really enjoy working with her today. Of the three desserts on the menu, Mary will be making a deconstructed chocolate tart served with a quenelle of bourbon vanilla ice cream and gold leaf. She will be working alongside pastry chef Hugo. You know, I was very intimidated in the beginning, and now I feel comfortable in a professional kitchen as well, as comfortable as you can feel in a professional kitchen. So I think Marie, she has a, a lot of finesse because she has the eyes to the details. She's listening and she executes things really, really nicely. I am daunted at the plating process and, and also I have to put like a quenelle of ice cream on top and I hate doing quenelles. This afternoon, some of Gibo's most esteemed clientele have been invited to dine, and they will ultimately decide if the MasterChef contestants have recreated executive chef Guillaume's signature dishes to his standards. Check on chef, please. Hey, listen up. Three quarts, one ravioli, one foie gras, one trotter, one vin. Wait. Wait. One veal. Yeah. It's so different to any other restaurant I've ever been to. I mean, it's just a combination of really, really beautiful food and exquisite service. Mike is off to a promising start with the lobster ravioli. Well done, Chef. well done, not bad. For the first one, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. Very good, no? It was absolutely fantastic. Really full of flavour. Really, I enjoyed it. It was lovely. Presentation was perfect, which I think is really impressive for a chef at this level. So really well done to him or her. I've had it here before. It's my favourite dish in Gibo's. It tasted amazing, just as I would have expected. Really good. Lovely flavour. Sauce is good. Mm -hmm. Lovely textures. Not too much curry. Mm. Wonderful.
While Mike may have started well, Bridgine is struggling with the presentation of her dish. The other way around. The customer looks at it like this. Clean down. Yes, chef. Chef. Yes, chef. Fucking lift on. I think the guys were a bit bothered by the fact that I'm a kitto, that I'm a lefty, so, uh, yeah, it does make it a little bit more awkward because you're kind of doing everything backwards. Whoever made this tonight, it was as delicious as I've ever had in Gilbo's. I revealed from my main course and I really enjoyed it. And definitely it, it was of a power with what they serve in Gilbo's uh, every day. One, radially. As Mike's orders back up, he starts to lose focus. Ah, I don't like that. Allez. Okay, change plate. Change plate. You need to check your pasta. Eh? Overall, it was very tasty. The lobster was beautifully cooked. I felt there was a little bit too much pasta. It, it, it created too dense a, a parcel around the lobster. Your pasta is not cooked. Come on, hurry up. Mike has done very well, but uh, some of the dishes have been in inconsistent. Some are very good, some are poor. Uh, he's all over the shop, really. As Mike tries to get back on top of his orders after a great start, left-handed Bridgine becomes more accomplished in her placing up. Ah, well done. Oh, my God. What's, what's happening? Magnificent. Well done. Oh. <laughs> Don't find too surprised. Ah, like a necklace. Excellent. Sauce is beautiful. But, yeah, it's very tasty. If Bridgine cooked this, this is... Um... What she did, then... She's a long way from where she started. Not completely. Breeding is, uh, is, is excellent now. The, the, the last couple of plates are, are, are top-notch. Uh, it's, per it's perfect, you know, I'm very happy with it. Chef Kim is very happy with it. I hope she stays at that level, you know? With all the starters and main courses nearly served, it's time for Mary to start on her desserts. With all her prep done, Mary needs to hold her nerve as she plates up each dessert with the precision that is required. Allez, 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 allez. You need to, after, after you we have to go fast. And then needs to top off each tart with a quenelle of bourbon ice cream. For me, it's not really, really good. It's, it's better, okay? Table 30, chef. The only thing is really, really, really important to me. Yeah. It's at no stage I want to see a section like this. Okay. Never. Chef, will you tell me if it's okay or not? Now you... When I ask you to do the tunnel, you need to go for it. My souffle is in oven, it's ready in uh, 30 seconds. I have to sell my table. Come on, Mary, you need to hurry up. Yes, chef. The chocolate tart was 10 out of 10. Just the ice cream let it down a little bit. I don't know the background of these guys, but if they're able to produce food like that after such a short space of time, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It was really very tasty, crispy, smooth, nice, bitter chocolate taste. And obviously a bit of gold lipo looks quite good too. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Looks good, Nicholas. Mm, amazing. Yeah, this is right up my street. A wonderful dessert. I love ice cream, even still. I, I could do without the quenelling, but um, no, I really enjoyed it. It was great. There's, there's a long way to go between our level and you know, Michelin star cooking, so. You know, they were patient with us, and um, but we, we, we all really enjoyed it, I think. What are we looking for? It's, uh, it's going to be one of those races where everyone is capable of winning, and if they do something like we had today, then it's going to be a tough call for us tomorrow, which is what I'm looking forward to. I hope you had a good lunch today. I would like to introduce you to the MasterChef's finalist. First of all, Bridgine. Mary. Mark. 
So listen, three of you, fantastic job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. Very well. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Game. If you have to go down to the bookies and place a bet on who's going to win, who do you think it is? I say Bridgin, no? Uh, Mike has a lot of potential too. He need to listen and use his own uh, guts feeling, you know? So Mary hasn't got a looking at all then? The key to the dish, the quality of the Cornell, just, she just couldn't capture it at all. Yeah, and, uh, she couldn't get it. Eventually we had to say, that, you know, that's not good enough, send it back, send it back. Next time on MasterChef... I want to eat something great, not just something good, something really great. The three finalists cook one last time for Dylan and Nick. This is three courses in three hours. Anyone can lift the title. We were so, at the end, and so close to it. You know, you can really taste the bribe. And the winner is crowned. The very first MasterChef Ireland champion is... Thank you.